and um, and tablets. Apparently, there was, there was a plague, and um, Hadrian had plaques erected there and all over the um, the empire uh, to say about this this plague. Anyway, if anybody's interested in creating ah, right, yeah. an activity or event, you've got to get in touch with them. Right. That sounds really interesting. Thanks. Yeah, they'll be having reenactments and things going on all of next year. What, another plague? <laughs> another could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I'll give that one a miss. Yeah. Oh, and they, and they were talking about green side <laughs> lead mine at Oldswater. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear i've pushed it a bit too far and i haven't even said my interesting bit of news yet which will push him way over the edge <laughs> do you think that will be on youtube at any time what the plague <laughs> yeah. The conferences yeah they recorded it so you can oh right can so see it it. yeah 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 uh, 3d modeling of the plague yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, obviously I was in uh, Glasgow obviously for the last two weeks oh, at COP twenty six, right. and I had the the highlight of my fortnight was being called out to Nessie. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I actually got a call at seven six forty five in the morning to go go out and get the jet immediate jet ski launch to Nessie, and I thought, what? <laughs> One <laughs> of the protest groups. Yeah, one of the protest groups had made a life-size model of it and was trying uh, to launch it, but the police arrested it and, oh. and impounded it before we got there. So I never actually got uh, to see it. So. Oh, dear. oh God. But I think the Sun Can newspaper just... got a picture. Sorry, Carl, go on. Can I just say something? Have you been are you, are you not on drugs tonight, Austin? <laughs> because this is just it's archaeology, man. It's just great. <laughs> man. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> this is why we do archaeology, Carl. It just helps us let it all out. Yeah. Let it all out. Flip it out. What have you been doing? Saving it up for the past year. Well, I did miss last week's, so yeah. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I missed it. You I was you were last week. Oh, right. No, I, was, I managed the week before, but I couldn't get on last week. So <clears throat> oh, we thought you were you, um, Andy. Oh, and it was really good last week. <laughs> Was the best one yeah, all right. year. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> what what, what yeah, it was, was it? It was brilliant. What did you do? Uh, Canada was next. Right. Canada. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, do, you know, do you know? Strangely enough, right when I, I I've told you about this um, class I did I, uh, a couple of weeks ago. I did the Antarctica lecture. Um, Antarctica mm. lecture. Mm. And I was late. Get I was late getting back to. Um, I was like getting back to the caravan and I had to get, I'd run out of, um, I, I'd run out of power and, 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 and whatever. Right. And, and, and the, the van and the car were in the garage and I, it was, a, so I was walking, I was walking down the road, long story short, you know, about the guy I bumped into along the road who worked for BT, who gave me a cup of tea in the middle of the road. Right. So 10 minutes later, then I realized I was meant to be teaching the class. So, so I, I was teaching the class for 30 minutes walking down the road. And apparently it was one of the best classes that they'd ever had. Ah, well, there you go. So, so, there you go. Yeah, it's just it's getting bored, bizarre. Right. Not so right, okay. bizarre. There's, oh. there's a reason for that, Carl. ADHD and any of those kind of um, situations are, uh, are distracted by things like walking or singing. So it actually makes it easier to speak and concentrate on what you're doing when you're doing something else. My youngest does that. She she just mm. doesn't stop when she's out walking. So, mm. so it's the best way to, for Carl to give his lectures. Oh, yeah, he should be out walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, then. Right, if, I, hang on, <laughs> if I turn all the lights off now, right? And I'll, we can class. imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's back to how the brain works, you see. It's brilliant. Do you know, this is actually being recorded. Oh, for God's sake. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. I, I am going to say next week we're going to be doing the Etruscans, right? And, oh, and um, we, we will we will be all of next year doing British sort of prehistory um, in a British context, but we will be sort of going outside that bubble in a prehistoric context to other uh, other parts of the world. I've, I've told everybody, 
the reason why we're doing that is because I was bullied by everybody at Armside and they all said they wanted more British archaeology because when we did uh, the the island um, in the Hebrides, it was all like, well, we wanted to do more of that. And David yeah. was, was, it was good. that he wanted. Yeah. It was. It was really good, that. It was good. Oh, hang on a minute. You you just said last week's was really good. You can you can't make you can't keep saying it's all. I good. didn't say I didn't say last week's was the best. I what think, I think <laughs> oh, it's, for quite, God's it's sake. quite good to have home and away, isn't it? Home and away. Home yeah. and away. Uh, yeah. I'll have your cake and eat it. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> At that point, do I say to do I say can I have another cup of tea? Yeah. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. yeah. Not talking to me now. No. Yeah, good. Make sure there's more milk in it this time because it was a bit. And okay, you can. I'll, I'll, I'll wear it then. Right, okay. Um, right, right. I really appreciate everybody getting the money's paid for the month, so that's great. Um, I, I've got a serious announcement to make. The um, oh god, it was a gasp. Then I got a serious announcement to make. That um, um, it's it, it's. You know, the, there might be um, the, the Queen isn't very well, and um, and if if anything does happen, uh, God's sake, it doesn't, uh, then archaeology coming will shut down for the whole week. Um, all our Facebook pages, all our classes, everything will shut down for the week. So I thought I'd give everybody um, advance warning on that. But you'll be you'll be you'll be written to um, if if that does happen. Anyway, um, I thought I'd mention that. Right. So tonight tonight. Do you know, I more or less started on time, but it's blooming 7.58 now. Anyway, um, we'll have a break in a minute. Tonight, <laughs> I wanted to do the archaeological site of Stanton Drew, right? And um, and it's it's a stone circle site. And I just I just thought the other day, I thought, right, um, I wanted to sort of um, give a little bit of a teaser what we're going to be doing next year. And I thought I would do... Um, the prehistoric site of Stanton Drew, and I and I will apologise. I've actually got, I've got, I've got some kind of a cold at this minute, and um, oh yeah, I've got COVID. Right, I can't teach. Right, I, I've I've got some kind of a cold or something, so I've got a runny nose. So if I can't wear our masks, you're all right. And about the jab. <laughs> oh, God's sake. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Right, okay, yeah. So we're, we're going to be doing Stanton Drew, right? Um, and, and the way I want to do it is is by describing the archaeological process and um, some photographs and and some plans and say and I've been there and it's in Wiltshire and it's a site that most of us have probably not visited, but I have. Um, and I, I probably just sort of um, try and expand on what stone circles mean from my point of view um and um and i i've been I, i've been thinking more and more recently about about my uh, master's degree and and the direction it went in um, i.e the, the place that history and archaeology has within the landscape and there is no such thing as a prehistoric site by itself and there's no such thing as a roman site by itself there's no such thing as a medieval castle by itself everything's within the setting so a medieval castle might occupy a prehistoric burial mound and that burial mound occupied this place that had been felled but trees had been felled and then the castle was used by something else so nothing in nothing in history and archaeology can ever be seen in one moment in time it's it's a it's a multiple layered time frame which 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 the um um which the academic a chap by the name of tim ingold uh, described as you've got a landscape but you've got something called a tarscape where everything's <laughs> going on and everything's multiple um and and when when we think about stone circles and when when we think about british prehistory that's that's something that i'll be getting really into now I haven't shown you any images yet, and um, one 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 thing I one thing I'm going to do um, is that's me speaking. Um, so, one is it just me showing on the screen now? Yeah, it don't matter. Yeah, good, good. No. Um, so, so I, I was I was standing at a prehistoric site um, near here on Sunday, 
Um, and it's a prehistoric site that um, has got beautiful views. Um, and there's a bank around all of it and there's a ditch around it. And I went up there and I was looking around the site. And I, I turned to Michelle and I said, um, even though this site today um, is, is grazed by sheep, that is part of its usage. Um, and then I started thinking there's there's other things on this site, later changes, there's there's later boundaries, there's things that have altered. Um, and then it was pointed out to me what that boulder can't have uh, that boulder can't have just been in that place since the prehistoric period over on that bank. Has it been moved here? And I and basically, yeah, it probably had. The, the the one danger that the one danger that we do have with prehistory is that we look at it and we always think that like Stonehenge, we, we think we think nothing's happened there um for like two thousand years. It, it's just been like abandoned two thousand years ago, and that's absolute nonsense. Um nothing in history and archaeology stays in aspect unless it's buried in the ground. Nothing is Nothing is Tutankhamun's tomb, Moon's tomb above the ground. If it's above the ground, it's been, it's been, it's had that interaction. It's had that word intercourse with everything, uh, like a prostitute would from day one. And I know that sounds crude, but to try and get, to try and get, um, to try and get the sense of prehistory across, we've we've got to, we can't think about prehistory as being like Castle Rig, right? We go to Castle Rig. And, and I took some of you to Castle Rig and we had a very exciting time at Castle Rig um, that, that, you know, we, 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 we spent about two hours there, I think. Well, it was at least an hour and, and we were looking at this and we were looking at that and there were there was people, uh, members of the public involved. And, and um, I think Andy was there, Drina was there, Margaret was there and Claire and, and the rest of the gang. And um, and. One of the things I pointed out was that you look you, you look around the field and it's a medieval landscape, right? Some of those stones at um, Castle Rig may have actually been altered or changed. Mm. Thank you very much for the tea. May have been altered or changed. Um, how How is... You look at Stonehenge. Mm. Stonehenge. Stonehenge had some of the stones repositioned and moved in 1958. It's not a, it's not, that's, that can't be said to just be a prehistoric site. Um, and, you know, I, I, you, you, so nothing, nothing above the ground has, has ever stayed <clears throat> in one moment in time. We, we think it is. We go there with experts and they say, they say, Hadrian's wall, look at that wall there and look at Vindolanda and this. But Vin, Vindolanda was, was abandoned as a site. Um, over 1,500 years ago. However, the, the, it's, the, there's farmer houses being placed there. There's been so many different things happening there. We live and breathe the landscape. We take artifacts away from the site. We kick mole hills and, and, and we see sheep grazing and there's archaeological excavation. And archaeological excavation is in fact part of the change of the site because when you archaeologically excavate a site, you remove soil, you remove artifacts from the site, you change it, you alter it. Uh, you, you, um, so, so everything, everything has this intercourse and discourse and, and, and it's all multifunctional. And then, and only <coughs> then, um, can you see the past being relevant. Um, and it, it, this, this goes back to the early part of the class, which a couple of you missed tonight. I said to Pete, oh, did you see my article? Because well, I do a local column in the newspaper. And I said, well, um, and he said, oh, yeah, it was an article about an old tree. Um, and you, 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 you made a lot of fuss about this tree. It was a, um, a sweet chestnut tree. And, and the point is that that sweet chestnut tree is not just a sweet chestnut tree. It's part of the landscape. It's, it's part of the photograph that I put into that newspaper. It's part of a hedgerow. It's part of the fact that that sweet chestnut, mm. chestnut tree was planted. It's part of the fact that it's one of the only old sweet chestnut trees in that locality. And, and it, it can't just be seen as a sweet chestnut tree because it, it's, 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 
like everything has, has got a massive sense of relevance as human beings as human beings we 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 are um not just human beings um i i've got i've got I've got two screens in front of me at this minute. And the person who's on the right of me now is Margaret. M M Margaret, Margaret um, has, 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 has got so many different things in her life that, that's made Margaret, Margaret, right? Margaret is not just Margaret. She's not just a woman with hair and a house. Um, Margaret is um, the component part of, of that tarscape. Every, all the interaction, all those memories, all even a little cut in the finger that, that has been still there from a ch from a child. I don't know if you've got one, Margaret, but you know what I'm trying to say. All of these things, all of these things are just like a stone circle. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into a stone circle now and we're just going <laughs> to um, hopefully get my images straight away, which is um, uh, which is often good. And we don't have a massive amount of images today because I don't think we need them. But 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 the fact of the matter is we we look at this um, site known as Stanton Drew. And I was quite, right. One one thing one thing I need to say is something that I was something that I was mulling over in my head. Let's just get let's just get an image. Are you is this screen sharing at this minute? No, no, no. it's just you. And now it's yeah, different. yeah. I, I, I'm glad somebody realised I wasn't screen sharing. Um, right, okay. So there it is. So Stanton drew and <clears throat> got lots of images. There we go. A postcard, a postcard of a stone from Stanton drew in 1886. Love it. Um, it's a postcard, 1886 postcard of a stone at Stanton drew. Um, and yeah, the, the point, the point I was, the point I was just trying, going to make and, and the point that, um, is that, uh, I, I was thinking, right, how many stone circles are there in Wales? Um, th there are, there are a few, but there's not many, right? And you think, oh, but there's loads of them. And I think, yeah, there are loads of stone circles in Wales, but they've been erected in recent times because we got something called, um, um, the Gorseth, we, 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 we have we have um, uh, we we have the Eisteddfod and the Gorseth, and, and and basically what we do, um, the Eisteddfod, which 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 is placed on every year across Wales, they used to build a stone circle in every place that the Eisteddfod was placed at. So we've had we've had Eisteddfods in Wales since. Um, since the late 1700s and so you can imagine um that's 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 over 200 stone circles being built in towns and villages so we've got we've got over 200 stone circles in wales that are not ancient right they're new um and there's even stone circles being erected across wales that by people who just thought they'd build a stone circle right and um uh, and the point is, is that is part of the culture of the stone circle, right? So what, what we're not just interested in um, um, prehistoric stone circles. Uh, it's, it's a stone circle, right? It's a circle of stones. And, and this and all of this, all of this comes, all of this comes across um, because we looked at a stone circle um, on the Hebridean islands and um, um, and we just thought the Callanish stones and we just thought, right, OK, uh, we, we want to know more about that. So I will do it. I will do that again. We're not doing that tonight. We'll do that again. Um, but the one the one thing about prehistory is is that since I originally taught it with Andy, what we did, we had a book which was um, by James Dyer um, on uh, it was called Ancient Britain. Um, and since since then, uh, my whole world and and interpretation of history and archaeology has completely changed. Um, and um, but what we've got in the landscape is is still the same, and um, it's just trying to it's just trying to make sure that what we're talking about within the landscape um, is, is being refreshed. For example, I I wrote a um, I wrote my local column 
for the newspaper for next week, not this week, Pete, next week. And there's a there's a there's a capstone that's lying in a field near Bonvilston in the Vale of Glamorgan. Well, nobody knows it's there except for a few of us. And I was the one identified as a as a as a capstone for a burial chamber about 30 years ago. And um and then I used then I used to say it was a burial chamber capstone, right? Definitely. But now we now we know about these these chambers, these burial chambers, as being used for lots of other things other than just being used as burial chambers. And in many ways, many ways we can say the same thing about these stone circles. Um, that um, the modern the modern concept of a stone circle is associated with the Eisteddfod. So basically, you've got a, um, um, a circle of stones, and then you've got a big slab. Um, and that big slab in associated with that those modern stone circles um is 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 not um the stone slab that people might interpret interpret in the past with these stone circle sites as somewhere where somebody may have been sacrificed which is probably not the case anyway so you know we um we we in, in popular in popular folklore, um, the stone the stone circle has been seen as being a, a place of um, evil. Uh, the stones represent women who would dance around on the Sabbath, or if you watch one or two um, films from the nineteen seventies, there might be a load of bikers that have been turned to stone. Um, and, and you know you got all these different sort of interpretations on what a stone circle is, and. Um, you know, there, there's the Manitoul monument in Cornwall, and uh, there, there's a like a circular stone um, in, in a um, there's a stone with a with a hole cut out of it, and that's been sort of arranged into like a stone circle arrangement. But that it would be placed into that stone circle arrangement about 130, 140 years ago because somebody thought, oh, we we need to like move that prehistoric stone where it should be and. And the interpretation of the site is very, very different. When I went to Stand and Drew, um, this was about, it's got to be at least um, um, 12 years now. When I went to Stand and Drew, um, it was a site that there was loads of sheep wandering around and, um, and it was just like a bit of a mess um, within this field. And you, you had to dart around, um, um, I think there was cows in the field as well. No, no, it wasn't sheep, it was cows big cows wandering around the field and um and unfortunately when when you're looking at a prehistoric site and there's loads of cows wandering around it alters your perspective of what that prehistoric site is about and it's exactly the same as what i say with stone circles if you if you've got a load of muggles wandering around stone circles <laughs> going in and out the stone circles and um um and just wandering around the stones touching them being very disrespectful um again that takes away the meaning of stone circles um i can i can remember being at stonehenge um on solstice one one year and um they 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 i don't i don't know if they i don't think they do this anymore but they used to open um stonehenge um for the solstice um and like you would have like 10,000 people at stonehenge Wandering around the stones, jumping on top of the stones, trying to rock the tap stones, urinating against the stones, writing on the stones. And you're thinking, but for the rest of the year, we're not even allowed to go and touch them, right? And 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 um and what I what I witnessed that night, I just thought, this is mad. This is just not what this thing is about. And people would go there and they would say, oh, my God, you know, the sun's coming up. See, you know, we're, we're here because it's the solstice and we've got a right to be here. No, you don't have a right to be at these stone circles to do these terrible things. In fact, most of us don't have a right to be at them in the first place if you put them in a prehistoric context. These are very special places. Um, and, and you've got that, so have to have that reverence for these sites when you visit them. <laughs> because without reverence, without a sense of respect... Uh, we we can't expect to understand them at all. Um, you know, there's rights and wherefores with with lots of monuments. So at Stanton Drew, what we've got is 
is is this is a little sketch you get lots of these on the internet um and it's it's down to do is part of um a, a network of stone circles so you've got the great circle you've got the northeast circle you've got the southwest circle you've got the cove now all of these all of these and you've got two stones hanging there and you've got the quite a quite um would be interpreted as a burial chamber and um and one one thing one thing about these stone circles is that they're never alone. There's always something else about them. So you can't go to you can't go to Avebury and expect just to see the stones at Avebury, right? Um, you've got an alignment of stones going to Avebury, right? Um, um, you've got the um, you've got the ave- you've got the avenue leading to Avebury. Um, and in, in and and you've got burial chambers within that landscape. Stonehenge, for example, you've got all these mounds and everything all over the place. So you can you can never you can never see these sites on their own, and you can never try to understand these sites at all. You can't understand them because you, we've got no right to understand them because the the time period that these were actually used is so distant. Um, and then, um, and then then all the other arrangements of things around there have been put by different people to mean different things and um, and, and and have a, a different aura about them. But instead of having a right to understand these things, that we can actually give them the respect and then try um, and maybe see and do a little bit of interpretation and try try and get a bit closer. One thing I absolutely one thing I absolutely hate is people giving me lectures about these being um, great observatories and their, their, their mappings of the cosmos and all the rest of it. And my answer every single time is, is that these, th- these, these types of, I'll show you a few images, these stones, you can see there's houses really nearby. This is the great circle. Um, these stones themselves were erected by our ancestors. They were erected by people who had an ownership of their landscape, people that knew more than we do about these things, people who could tell you what these meant at that moment in time, not a year after or not a year before, but what these things meant to them at that moment. I was speaking to a Buddhist the other day and the Buddhist turned around and said, I, I, he said, um, he, he was chatting away and then I, then I said, yeah, but it's all about the now, isn't it? It's all about the moment. It's, it's all about that moment. And, and in many ways, when you go to these sites, it is, it is about that moment. If, if, you can, if you can grasp that moment and you can touch the stone and you can feel an aura or you can um, ask to enter this um, space. Do you know, I, I don't talk about, I don't talk about my, um, my religion and I don't talk about my faith at all. But one thing is when I went to Stonehenge in amongst uh, in amongst all these people, um, there, there was um, there, there was a friend of mine that I bumped into. And, and I said, will you invite me into the center part of Stonehenge? And he said, oh, yeah, I do understand. When there was people dancing around and just like whatever. So, so that's that's my sort of reverence. So I've been to Stonehenge. I've been to Stand and Drew. I try to understand these things. Um, so, so again, we're looking at this with the word cove as well. Uh, this is this is the thing about stone circle sites. So, so when when we actually do um, in months and months and months and months and <clears> months <throat> time, when when we when we actually do a talk about stone circles and we do prehist and stone circles and we talk about stone circles suddenly appearing out of the peat in, in Cornwall and, and the Hebrides. And, um, and we look about stone circle sites um, that do exist in their multitudes in Cumbria. Mm. Yes, there's loads of stone circles in Cumbria. In fact, if you go over towards Millam, um, it, there are lots of stone circles mm. um, and many more than anywhere, many more than in Wales, if you exclude the ones associated with the Ostead fog. And, and words are familiar as well, like the word the cove. Well, you know, there's a cove associated with Avebury. 
as well, the word the cove. Basically, it's an arrangement of special stones. But then again, all of these stones are special. They, they, they've, they've all got a special sense. So you've got a nice, you've got a nice little plan here. So you've got, um, so the orientation is if you sort of move that a little bit, uh, hang on a minute, if we sort of glance at that and we sort of move that a little bit further over. Um, and what you do have is this sort of, these stones, it's a, it's a central circle, southwest circle, and that over that one over there, um, southeast circle. You're thinking, well, hang on, that don't look like a, a circle. It looks like a, a big piece of wood with a big circular thing for banging someone over the head. That's that's the shape of that. But again, that that's that's another point. <laughs> the word circle is is the name given to the shape. It doesn't actually mean anything. <clears throat> it's, it's just like chamber, burial chamber. It doesn't mean to say that. What, what does this word mean? So we, 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 what we do get is obsessed over words and try to put meanings on the words rather than the meanings of the archaeology that we're actually looking at. Um, so, so that's the location. That's Stanton Drew. And we go, we look at, we look at these images and what I've got is some really nice text I would like to look at. And if we go that, if the, 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 um, this is the, the, the central circle, the great circle, which is these stones. If we want to, if we want to enlarge a little bit as well. And, and to be honest with you, that, that looks really nice. Right. And, and, when I when I went to Stanton Drew, and I know I'm and I know I'm what I'm doing, I, I know exactly what I'm doing today, and I'm and I know I'm deliberately distracting myself to try and bring out some odd odd bits. It, it's um because on a on a Saturday I I I I teach somebody um the the archaeology of the Second World War, not the archaeology of the Second World War. I could do. The history of the Second World War, and um, and I keep saying to her, I say we're, we're going to do this in a different way. We're, we're not going to look at the we're, we're not going to look at the obvious stuff. We're 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 going to look outside the box, and um, and we're looking right. Um, how did the Spanish Civil War affect the outbreak of the Second World War? Um, and and what exactly happened to stop Spain going into the war and all these different things go, go different angles, diff different ways of doing things. And you'd see this wonderful picture here, but when you go there and you've got animals and you've got, um, and you my, my, my French now, you've got cow shit everywhere. It really, it really stops you appreciating the site, the, the, the manner of the site, the, 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 the connectiveness of the site. Um, you know, I, Again, I'm, you, you're seeing my anger with with the way with the way these sites are controlled and are not um, given properly, right? It, it might uh, it might actually surprise you all, right? But the way English heritage, um, the way English heritage displays Stonehenge is probably the correct way. Stopping people going in amongst the stones. Mm. Um, and stopping animals wandering around and all the rest of it, because maybe maybe it's it, it's it may it gives it a, a sense of distance at Stonehenge, but you've got a sense of respect with animals wandering around these types of sites and and whatever. You don't have that sense of respect. I've actually surprised myself by saying that, but um, you know I. I've been to stone circles in um, Cornwall and a number of times, and I I I I don't go in the centre of these stone circles because I can't because because I've got a sense of reverence for them. Um, Stanton Drew and its ancient stone circles, and if you noticed, I did not um, go past those stones at Castle Rig either. Anyway. But and I'm an archaeologist. <laughs> um, Stanton Drew and its ancient stone circle. So, so one thing I want to say is that, um, in many ways, um, the 
the stone circles themselves are our first um, connections with, with our ancient past. And always use the word ancient very carefully. Um, Hadrian's Wall is not ancient. A medieval castle isn't ancient. Um, I might use the words occasionally in the wrong context, but ancient means something very old. Ancient means something that you need a different sense of connection. You can't connect with a with a book that tells you that Dave built this or um, or this was built by the Romans or something like that. You you don't have those markers. So the markers that you've got um, are the embodiment of what you think um, and not what you're being told. You can be told that a castle is built by um, Gilbert de Clare, or you can um, think that a castle or a tower uh, was besieged by Bonnie Prince Charlie in Scotland, right? You that that's fine, right? You can be told that, right? But you can't be told anything about these sites. But you can be given clues, and you can be given you can be given indications, and you can be given some some footprints into untapping. The, the resources that are these uh, types of monuments, these ancient stone circles. So um, I haven't even I haven't even looked at my notes yet, so I'm gonna have to do that now. Um, so you still see any images on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Good. So so the Stanton Drew stone circles. Again, let's we know what the word circle means. Nothing. Stanton Drew, these monuments um, are, are within the village of Stanton Drew. And um, if you're with Pete um, and his wallet's open, go and use the toilet. And by the time you come back, Pete will have bought you a drink at the bar. That's what I've done with Pete anyway. The largest stones. The, so what we, what we find, this, this stone circle itself has a diameter of 113 metres in diameter across 113 meters now 113 meters is quite an excessive stone circle site um it's the it's the second largest stone circle site in britain um after avebury and um and do you know what it, it, it's exciting to be be looking at british archaeology and to maybe just spend a whole session on on avebury the danger with looking at British prehistory, we could be doing it for the next four years and still not even get to um, the Romans getting into Britain, which is fine. Um, but, um, you know, it's we, we have to we, we have to step very carefully um, and not allow um, Stonehenge, Stonehenge, you know, Stonehenge itself um, sort of dominate our interpretation of these stone circles you, you you everyone thinks about stonehenge it's not it, it, it's over, it, it, it's over it's overdone do you know whenever when anyone turns around and says oh you know the Priscelli stones were moved over land and um, and this happened and that happened i always put it to a back burner and the reason why i put it to a back burner is i just think well what about castle rig OK, and um, what about those little um, unknown stone circles that you can find in Cornwall? What about those little ones up by Millam? Right. Uh, uh, what about, um, you know, and, and you just you, these stone circles and uh, are, 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 um, are to be are to be loved and cherished. They, they, they are the best and most populous of our Neolithic monuments. Um, Neolithic into Bronze Age monuments. They're the, they're the most plentiful resource of energy um, and um, enigmatic projection of what prehistoric life was about. You know, it's not, they're not castles, right? They're not habitational sites. You could argue that they're not religious sites, but they've been created. They're, they're, they are something. They, they are. And, and 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 these sites themselves have have a huge date range. It, it's like it's like a church. It's it's like a church. You can um, Michelle was saying about a church which is which is nearby, and she said you've got to see this church. It's an old, it's an old 
It's an old medieval church, um, which would be a damn sight better than going to see a Victorian <laughs> church um, somewhere in Glamorgan, right? Which we, um, a church, the medieval church is gone, and they've 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 chucked, they 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 they've, they've <laughs> tossed in there um, um, a, a, a Victorian church. So let's have a look at a medieval one, right? Um, and the point what I'm trying to say is is that is that in pre prehistory the most the most dominating site in the Neolithic and the Bronze Age is the Stone Circle, right? Ring of Brodga, love it. Okay, Ring of Stennis and Orkney as well, love it. The Calanish Stones, love it. We, we're there. We, we, we love them, right? Um, and, and we don't love them enough. And um, medieval period that the most most land breaking monument in the medieval period goes between a castle and a church those are the two things right forget in the roman period what what if, if somebody said okay then what's what's the most important thing um that the romans left in the roman era in britain i wouldn't say hadrian's wall um i i wouldn't say roman roads that they're over they're overdone, right? I would actually see say those walls. Um, yeah, I get I, I I go I go into child mode when I see a when I see a Roman town wall. I love them. I I, I just um, yeah I I could uh, Jessica's very <laughs> lucky to be taking people down to Chichester and showing them the town wall at Chichester, the Roman town wall at Chichester. That that's the most enigmatic. Um, embodiment of Roman Britain, the town wall, right, or, or, or the fort wall, that's it, that's the most important thing, not the, not the lighthouses in Dover, not, not sort of the, not the, these, the, the amphitheatres and stuff, it, it, and so, so the stone circle itself mm -hmm. is, the Stanton Drew stone circle is the thing, the, it is, is the moment, <coughs> um, and, and strangely enough, right, even though Stanton Drew is so, so important, it was only protected as a scheduled ancient monument in 1882. Oh, no, got the date wrong. 1982. It only became protected in 1982. Um, so up until that point, people have been moving and mm. taking stones away and using them in the construction of uh, Peter's rockery outside. Um, and and again back to that tree um pete you weren't ridiculing me at all but um back to that tree that i mentioned um in in lots of countries that tree would have been protected and scheduled and loved um in other but but we don't do them over here we don't protect trees in this country um, and we 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 don't really we're not very consistent about our scheduled ancient monuments and how we protect our monuments in this country. Everything that's prehistoric in Britain should be protected, everything. Because we, we don't, you know, we might have lots of stone circles, but if we start demolishing them and then we're gonna have one less and we're gonna have another one less. When there were many, then there were a few, then there were two, and then there was one and soon there'll be none. It is true. Um, we, we can't, I I use I've used this word in the wrong context. You can't keep history and archaeology in aspic, but it never above ground. It never has been in aspic. It's always been living and breathing. And by protecting these sites, what you're doing, you're you're allowing them to be used and protected and and understood. And um, you know, it's the worst experience to see people jumping up and down these stones and climbing all over them. But um, when you actually see people actually communicating with them and and having having a, a real sense of connection, um, that then then they bring in a meaning of their own. You can see clearly see that these um, stones that stand and drew are, are very near the the houses and uh, the other buildings and the church. There's the church there up on the um, up on the left hand uh, corner there. Another little bit of a plan. And and it, 
And one one thing, one one thing, not to sort of um, sound out of tune, but the but the but the rhythm of these monuments is not just about what you can see; it's about what you can't see. What is below the ground? Um, what is buried? Um, what isn't there? I I, I wrote this um, column to, um, about um, this capstone that had collapsed on the ground. And the and the rest of the upright stones had, had gone, um, and the capstone itself. I, I was I was saying, oh, what is under that capstone? <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to move that capstone and maybe see what's underneath it, and maybe find some human bones and maybe find some pottery? And then by the end of the article, I said, actually, no, it's not. Let's just allow these people to rest and allow these people to keep some of their secrets. We don't need everything. We don't need to know mm. everything. Because, to be honest with you, right, people have been people have been digging at Stonehenge for um, hundreds and hundreds of years, right, and they will never ever know the secrets of Stonehenge, no matter how they dig, no matter how much stuff they take out of the ground, they will never ever ever know the answers. So this this is why I this is why I dismissed this blue stone thing and movements of these from <clears throat> West Wales and and the quarries and all the rest of it. They think they know the answers, but they don't. They never ever will. So and and some and and the point is with these with these stone circles is that um, usually there's a ditch around the outside, and and as I said, they're, they're usually accompanied with other stone circle sites is the ditch around the outside wow just like Stonehenge just like um oh just like Avebury there's another one there's a ditch around the outside what, what does that ditch mean it, is it um is it a boundary to stop the likes of me and Pete going into the center of the stone circle or is it just a boundary to stop animals getting in is it a boundary for this is it a boundary for that it's all those intriguing questions but never ever get in an argument about stone circles. Just just sort of let them flow, because you can be as right as anybody else, as long as you're not as long as you're not obsessed with the answer. Do you know, it's it's like it's like entering into a relationship and you think that the person loves you and they don't, or you love them and it's not the other way around. Um, and you think, well, um, it, it's always nice to to sometimes let let the answers flow. So, and, and it's the stone circle, this, this, this stone circle site, the stand and drew, and I've actually got to have a break. Um, we're going to have a, yeah, I've nearly done a whole hour. Let's just do that. So this stone circle site, even though it was only scheduled in 1982, it, it's been a site that's been recorded and sketched and, and loved and, and, and seen and, and visited since it was first sort of became in the genre of antiquarian writing in 1664. But that's not exactly true, is it? If you go with what I've said, the Romans visited sites such as these. Do you know what? The Romans loved our stone circle sites. The Romans loved Stonehenge. You know, the Romans are visiting Stonehenge as a tourist attraction. And, and you think, hang on, Romans, right? So the Romans are visiting Stonehenge. Probably did the same with this site. So they, they're, they're visiting Stonehenge and they... Um, and... Uh, perfect cup of tea there. Um, uh, and, and they... To, to the Romans, Stonehenge has, has already been standing... Um, two and a half thousand years and there's been stuff going on there for three and a half thousand years, right? That's to a Roman, right? So to a Roman, whatever's going on, they didn't, they had no idea of what the of time scale. They just know that it's, it's not, it's not what it was, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not the great cathedral that it used to be. But then, then again, not all cathedrals have ever been completed. Um, and, and, um, and and you've got the um, oh god, how somebody's gonna have to help me here. Uh, um, the great great cathedral in Spain that's not been completed um, by that great artist. Sangrada. 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 Yes. Sangrada. 
the familiara. Yeah. Yes, that's, and apparently, it, 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 you know, it's, it's going to take another, was it 50 years to complete? Oh, not using, so long now. Using stone from Chorley. Yeah, they, yeah. They, put a, they put an awful lot of money into trying getting it finished fairly quickly. It's mm. not far off. It was going to be a long time, but the uh, Spanish government decided to go ahead with it. Yeah, they ran out of local stones, so they, they did. Had to having yeah. to import it from Chorley. <laughs> uh, and Chorley is where again? Somerset? <laughs> oh, like, I thought it was all oh, Chorley's in Chorley cakes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, 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 yeah, brilliant. So no, the before before we get completely distracted by by that, the the the, the point is is that. Um, that was never ever completed in the artist's um, lifetime, right? Mm. Um, and maybe the artist's um, true emboldened meaning <coughs> of what he felt that that should have been about when when he originally proclaimed um, to to be the architect of the cathedral. Spain has completely changed. It, it's not. It's not the country it once was. It's not. It's not the idol of Catholicism that the cathedral was meant to embody and embolden. So when even even when these stone circle sites have been are being erected, and they've taken like um, thirty to forty years. So by the time the person who's come up with the idea of, of doing this or a group of people, they're already dead. And then somebody comes in and says, ah, this is what they'll mean, right? So even before these stone circle sites were, were completed, the original meaning for what they were has also completely changed. So when 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 so everyone's visited this this one site, Santa Two, and you've got uh, John Aubrey visiting the site in 1664 and we'll, we'll talk about what he felt about this this wonderful site um and there we go it's it's druids it's, it's you're chucking in the druids again alongside the church there um druids um volgo the wedding um so that's going to be drizza the the, the um, wedding a common wedding we've got strange little map there the word druidical stones there i i that that's that that's something in it right that's uh that's got a meaning because again um when when people are looking at these stones they they talk about druids and they talk about um you know sacrifices and so on um and you know it, this this is all due to speculation and what changes is when you get modern archaeologists in with their mm. geophysics and you you get them identifying other stone stones um other um additional pits and post holes like like the albury holes that you see at stonehenge um and and the the other thing as well is if we if we if we think if we think right i gotta i gotta i gotta change i gotta change the uh i i, I gotta i gotta change the heel a minute um uh, you see you see that thing that says cove there right yeah um now you would think that that's all contemporary but it's not because the, the cove itself so an archaeologist comes along in an antiquarian comes along in 1664 he says that stone circle links with that. That links with the chamber up there, and that links with this, and it links in with the cove and all the rest of it. And somebody sat down on a Wednesday afternoon and said, we'll have that over there. We'll put that stone there. We'll have a bit of puce decor on that, and everything's going to be fine, right? But the cove itself predates this whole thing by probably about another thousand years. So you've got these, usually, you've got these stones, and they've been put there for another reason. Um, and they're not in a circle. So the point is, this word, this sort of circular thing, um, is 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 not really brandished as 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 what we think. So a variety of myths and legends about the stone circles have been recorded, including one about dancers at a celebration who have been turned to stone. 
So on that note, we're gonna we're gonna take a break, and I'm, I I really want to try and maybe finish not too after um, half past nine. So we'll just try and um, have a little bit of a short break. I'm just gonna see what is in the chat box from uh, Jessica. Um, oh, you've told us about the Vikings on the Azores, and and they didn't. Um, yeah, cool. Um, anyway, so. Well, what we'll do, we'll stop the sharing now. Anyone want to say anything before we have a break? Go on, Margaret, you know you want to. Well, there's been a new survey done about Castle Rigg uh, by the Al Oswald of the University of York. He calls them the Carlos Stone Circle. He calls it a different name. And um, he says that the stones have indeed been moved around and an old painting shows three scotch pine, scotch pine trees in the centre of the circle at one time. Oh, nice. Um, Where are they now? They've been chopped down, clearly. Uh, Wouldn't that be Sam great? Samuel Taylor Coleridge, in 1799, in his journal, wrote that the Keswickians, the Ke people of Keswick, have been playing tricks with the stones, moving them about. And um, you know the little inner circle, they call it the sanctuary, the little bit in the middle. They think yeah, that, it, that was yeah, probably yeah. a sheiling, a place for to corral the sheep. <laughs> but no, 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 no. No, that there's nothing wrong with that because that that's all part of that's all part of the story, isn't it? You know? Yeah. That really is. That's all part of the story. But I find them quite spiritual places. I mean, I'm not a religious person that goes to church every Sunday, but I definitely feel a connection with the ancestors when I go and look at these ancient monuments and stones. I have quite an overwhelming feeling call it uh, spiritual and, or a connection i don't know what it is but i find it quite overwhelming but yeah yeah i i understand i understand mm. yeah especially at castle rig it's very strong yeah. there yes yeah. it is I, and you, you want me to do a talk about castle rig yes i will so uh, don't even ask right so um cool so any we'll, we'll we'll try and speed this along now anything that you want to say andy no, it's fine. Thanks. Really interesting these things, and I, I love the way I, I love the particular point you're picking up. You just assume that the stone circles there first, and of course, in this case, it's not. That little cove was there, you know, possibly a thousand years before that, and it's how it develops in the landscape. And the castle rig, you've also got one of those stones is in a wall That's now, right. yeah. you know, outside the circle, yeah. and you kind of lose the concept of, of what that meant because it's hidden in the wall now. So yeah, they call them portable stones. Yeah. But, yes. but knowing where they were originally and yeah. you know and how it how it developed is is really in well, i find fascinating because it, it does relate to the landscape massively well they think there were two beaker burials in the center as well right and why not yeah, yeah. and why so not discovering things all the time yeah good why not right right so before we so we need the break so p mm. anything you want to say quick uh, well, yes. Um, the, the circles. What did the, the, those people see? Where? What? What circles could they see? The sun, that, that's the it. moon, oh. and these are circles. And uh, uh, they, they made the circles. The circles, the stone circles, were pre-Roman. So obviously, it was nothing to do with uh, girls dancing on the Sabbath, because there was no Sabbath. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Or was there? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but 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 you are you are right. What you what you've done there, um, you've bought you've bought the idea of the circle, the the circle of life. Yeah. Uh, you see what you see what we did there. We did an actual physical circle, and then we did yeah. another circle. Mm. Yeah. We did a spiritual circle. So you know that that that's a good point. And um, um, and, if, if and you yeah, no, I. If you look back to the uh, Celtic knotwork, the Celtic knotwork is not is never ending. And what is a circle? And never, never ending. ending. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Fine circles. 
they can find circles in community just by holding hands. Mm. Yeah, you exactly. Know, they, they find it on the ground from being in the holding hands. Yes. Yeah. And and if you look at someone's eye, um, it's a circle. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. You know, so so all these things. Right. And and Drina, Drina, um, so got that from you, Anne. And Drina, before we have a break. I find it very interesting that these things are being moved about. It never occurred to me before. And you just look at it and think it's a massive stone. It's gonna be and, there. And, it, and it's prehistoric like, where it's been moved. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah go on. No, that's it. It's just <laughs> That's something that never occurred They're to me. Maybe set in stone. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> right. Let's. Uh, uh, thanks for that, Trina. Let's. Uh, Jess, um, if you've got anything, save it to uh, at the end. We'll, we'll have a break now. Uh, we're, we're breaking now, so I'm going to mute. It's funny that picture there in front of us that Stanton drew and it's ancient yeah. stone circles. The photographs he showed us of the stones look a lot smaller than those ones. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mind They're you, perhaps I should. I suppose that's just because that's an artistic impression. Yes, I think you so, know, making it look and, a little bigger. Yeah. And uh, and perhaps trying to get some distance to, with the uh, riders at the front. Maybe the riders at the front were important. You know, important people have to be uh, emphasised, yeah. don't they? Yeah. yeah. Right. I think today's been very interesting. You know, yeah, I, I mean, uh, sometimes Carl can speak with quite a lot of passion about something, can't he? Yeah, and you, you sort of catch some of that, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's funny how you uh, you go from kind of like you know, the romance of the medieval period, and everybody knows about the Roman period, and then when you get yeah. more involved, you go to prehistory and it just gets stronger and stronger because there's so many yeah. more questions there. And, yeah. and, you th and, it, and I don't know whether you get a respect for their intelligence and their, their, their civilization. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I find that they, they, they massive landscapes they worked with. Whereas in, mm -hmm. as we, you, as you get more to, towards our period, our landscape gets smaller and smaller you know, we've got our little perimeter of our land and our yes. garden yeah. and, and everything outside. That's nothing to do with us, so, yeah. you know, which is part we've, of the We've fragmented as well, haven't we? Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I mean, they worked as, as a troop. Well, the hunter-gatherers sort yeah. of worked as a troop together where we're all yeah. isolated in our, yeah. the way we run yeah. our lives. It's, it's, all, it's totally opposite. Well, this is one of the uh, the theories that they're coming up with that with the... Uh, uh, the e ecological problems of today is that that we now think that we are here and we are that we are human beings and outside is nature rather than being part of nature. Yeah, that's right. being, uh, yeah. Well, we we we, yeah. we got that message a long time ago. In fact, it, I was watching a program this afternoon mm. of all about this, but this book started me off. Yeah, and I looked at the I looked at um YouTube thing he'd done as well, but I've, but I've only read the first part of the book. And, and he was sort of saying that the vision came with the, um, the Greeks, the division from um, once we started thinking, you know, we knew we'd got death. So yeah. we tried to think of a way that we would live. So we've got this special soul bit that lives forever. Right. So we don't really die. Yeah. And, uh, and the animals all die. And, yeah. And, and that's why we are divine and can, you know, uh, interesting rule over idea, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was his idea, evidently. So the Greeks were very insecure then. <laughs> well, they probably were, yeah. Had to have a well, reason for it. Yeah, well, uh, just... I, I mean, as I said, the, the early part, this book has really grabbed me today. I mean, I've, I couldn't put it down. 
Um, no, it's really they were saying, they were saying like animals, like you look at the chimps who can do things, and yeah, and yeah. and they have a very very simple warning sounds, yeah. which is a kind of language, but it don't go yeah. anywhere in it, you know. Yeah. Um, but that um, but but they can only live in the in the present mm-hmm. because they can't foresee the future or the or even remember the past in the way we can. But when people when people got enough la- language and developed a, the brain developed with the language, they noticed people dying, mm. and eventually came to the idea this can happen to me. <laughs> because, and all, almost that's sort of where the division came. Mm. Mm. There are there are some documented now cases of animals being aware of things like that as well. There was a yes, yes, a case on are. one of the programs I was watching recently yeah. of a killer whale off yeah. of North uh, West America that yeah. calf died and it carried it round yeah, until, yes, until actually yeah. it disintegrated. Yeah. Um, so it was and clearly some, aware that something was wrong. You know. So yeah, and there's some apes that will do something like mourning. And yeah. then you've got the stories of the elephants. Yeah, absolutely. Them. There's quite a lot of elephant stories. The elephants, aren't there? graves yeah. and things. Yeah. So there's some, um, perhaps not, perhaps they don't um, have a premonition of death, but they mourn when somebody's gone. You know, there might be mm. a difference. It's difficult there was, to know. There it's was difficult a, to know. There was a video I saw uh, recently as well of a um, a lady who works with sharks, just reef sharks, not big ones. Yeah. But uh, yeah. and she saw one with a um, a hook and a line caught in its mouth, yes. and eventually she managed to get it to trust her. So she actually had a, a chainmail um, glove on, put her hand in its mouth, and took this the hook out, right? And that shark kept coming back and cuddling up next to her every time yeah. it came near her. It recognized yeah. her, and it was you know yeah. you're thinking. Hang on a minute. That. That's that's like that's conscious thought. That's a process. Yeah, that's, that's a memory. Absolutely. You know yeah. that that makes yeah. it a, a sentient being that we've been. Yes, you know, we have laws in, in this country. They passed it fairly recently that they're not yeah. animals are not sentient, and that's that just yes. really contradicts. It was disgrace for what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Op- operations on live animals because they yeah. didn't feel anything. I mean, it's yeah, terrible. Yes, yeah. The sort yeah. of beliefs people have had. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the I, I, whole that, context. The death is not the end. Yeah, that's that's something that everybody hangs on to, isn't it? Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. yeah. It's not the end. Yeah, it's that's right. You state. can't. It's you can. That's right. End. People are so scared of death that you have to think they of there's something after death. The you can't. You can't go with it. Some people. Do you do you think can't. that 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 fear is something that is within us all, or do you think that's something that we have been taught to keep us under control? um it's the whole basis of religion isn't it really well it is and i yeah. see that as a, a man-made construct to control people yeah probably yeah. for the, for I the think better religion is like that but at the yeah. same time if there was real fear it would be a comfort to people wouldn't it to be told well mm. you know they've got this soul and, you, and then there's all the fairy stories of where you go and what happens of course after you die yeah. that and each religion's got its own mm. comforting story um but um, but I, I agree with you. Religion is a lot about control. It is because uh, if you go the other way, um, and you think, okay, that's it, it's the end, then there's no reason to why to behave at all because you're just going to have to get out of this world what you can get, and that would then be the survival of the fittest, and everybody else would get trodden on. Well, so, it, it, an anarchy. It, that, you know, so. But that <laughs> it might not be that way if you had if you had the. Um, the kind of communities where people all work for each other and their children, mm. you know, it need not, it need not be. As well, you that, say. That's rather than having eternal life or, you know, reincarnation. Yeah. Yeah. The future is the next generation. I think you're yes. right there. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully. <laughs> as long as the climate doesn't warm up too much. Well, that's right. <laughs> If we, Otherwise, could get one of, if we could get one or two sensible leaders, we might yeah. all right. Forget it, it's over otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Funny how you say if if you're having a bad time, if really bad things are happening, 
and you say, I must have been a really bad bugger in a previous yes, life. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. But uh, you have to have some belief in the in the uh, yeah in the story to, to think that, don't you? I mean, yeah, yeah. There have to be some belief in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I always wonder whether that's one of our fundamental things as being human is we always think there has to be a reason. Yeah. 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 So. Well, th this book I'm reading is all about looking for meaning. Yeah. What's it yeah. called, Anne? It's called The Patterning Instinct. Patterning? Patterning. Yeah. Patterning Instinct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By Jeremy, really by Jeremy Lent. Jeremy Lent. Lent, e l e n t. Ah. I think it because the thing is, it it comes in the end to where we're looking at where we are now. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The, the book leads into the mess we're in now and how culture has led us there. Hmm. What do Quakers believe in? I know people who are Quakers and they believe sure. in the. In they believe people, in being, they're very peaceful, the aren't they? Yeah. People, don't they? Although, they, although I mean, the Quakers were quite involved in the slave trade and stuff, weren't they? So, but do, mm. they, do they do they so, worship so, a deity? Do they worship a god? No, no, they believe in God, but they 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 believe in honesty um, and yeah. just yeah. being truthful. Yeah, and things. Yeah. yeah. And I so didn't realise that you can actually be a member of any other religion and be a Quaker. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't. You didn't. You don't have to be just a Quaker, yeah. which is the I Hindus are like the Hindus are great. You can yeah. you can wor worship in their temple, whichever god you believe in. They are very oh, open. That's that's very decent and respectful, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, they're they're very open. And yet, look at the look at what you've got that on the one hand about them, which you can think very good. And then mm. they've got the caste system. Know, which which is an abomination, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, totally. <laughs> and the worshipping of the cow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, often that just depends how hungry you are. Sensible. Yeah. <laughs> we should start it here. Yeah. <laughs> we already got a hierarchy because we went for a walk up on the knot the other day, and they've got some different cows up there now. And Isabel, my eldest, said, "Oh, I really miss those Highland cows. They were really nice." Oh. And I thought. Yeah, I've got a pecking order already. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, when we were down in Cornwall, we were going to Carnooney, mm. and we had to pass through a field. And Carol was saying, oh, the, those cows will be all right. Uh, uh, don't, uh, don't disturb them. But the cows didn't have any udders. Ah, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, just, just frisky, frisky bullocks. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, have you ever walked along the pathway next to the meadow? You know the meadow in the centre of, um, at, at the back of Red Hills Road? Oh, yeah, the common it's called. The yes, common, yeah. yes common. yeah, yeah. Uh, that pathway. Yeah. And um, kind of two thirds of the way along, there are those two stone Gates. blocks yeah. with holes in. What yeah. are those all about? Well, I think that, you know, the, the road that goes the, up the knot and then over the top and down to um, uh, the tower. Yes, uh, that that's called Saul's Way. Oh yes, right. And yeah. I think that 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 is the bottom end of that, and that, and that goes through the village, down past the football pitch, down to Solcote's farm. Um, what are those two stones with the holes in? They're at gate posts. But they're really small. They're very short. Uh. Oh, so that I might could be... be a tiny little gate. Oh, I may be getting mixed up with them. Though. There are some gate posts about halfway along it. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I've seen the ones you're talking about. I will have to go and have a look now. Go and have a look. <laughs> well, it's and dark. They're, they're, they're right next to one another. It's and dark and raining. Holes. Yeah. <laughs> they're not facing one another, so the holes that they're, they're side by side. Oh, I'll have a look at this. Where this. you Where... go, you go yeah. through the gap onto is it Parkside Road? Yeah. You go through the gap and they're just there. Oh, okay. Well, I've looked at those. I've noticed those. With holes going well, in the wrong direction. That is where there was uh, the, the, the gate posts. There were two gate, big proper gate posts there um, uh, at one time. I'm just wondering whether that's another one that's got broken in half and been put around there or something. And that's just the two top ends sticking out. But mm -hmm. I'll have a look. Yeah. Go and have a look. They're, yeah. Um, yeah. A bit weird. 
that uh, yeah, it must have weaved along, possibly following the route of Red Hills Road onto Silverdale Road, and then round at some point, either diagonally across the field or on the edge of the field, mm. down to Solcoats, because that was called that was owned by the Saul family oh, Solcoats right. for many years. Yeah, uh, I think. It may well have passed out of their hands because one of the souls was killed in the First World War. Oh. And that might have been the heir. So Yeah. There's a name Saul comes up in the uh when they read the, all the names on the remembrance Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Is it there a are, Jewish name? Saul? I don't I don't know actually. I, I'll have to ask Jewish there there are people in the in the in the in the village who are related to them. Yeah, um, and I I know them quite well, so I I will ask. I, I'm Drina, not... Drina will know because she does the archives. Yeah, Drina knows everything. Are they Drina? <laughs> are <Yeah>. you wish? <laughs> I don't know. I've never come across any Jewish people. No. No. So I don't I don't know. Really don't know. We have some Jewish people in the village now, but yeah, it's not it's not renowned for its Jewish community, is no. it? No. 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 It's a it's a biblical name, isn't it, Saul? So it is a yeah. yeah. So, although it is Old Testament, isn't it? So you, I see what you mean. Yeah. Hmm. So. May you be. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, you're echoing again. No, oh, it's going for the it's, it's going for the Doctor Who part, isn't it? So. May you be smited with the life that you may never have. That was quite deep, wasn't it? It was right. a bit. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, 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 that was like a Doctor Who thing. Sorry. I think the word smited is, is a word that isn't used, um, used as much as it should be. No, you're right. Smited. Smited. Exterminate. Yeah. Exterminate. No, no. I, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, that wouldn't work if he said smited. Smited. <laughs> right, don't stop it, Andy. It's gonna make me sorry. ill. Sorry, sorry. Right, okay, right, good. Okay, let's let's get back into it. So uh, it, now it's all quiet. You see, you, you're all you're all poised on on the front line of the Third Reich. No, no, sorry. Uh, 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 Right, okay. Um, right, let's get another image up. Ah, right, yeah, that'll do. Um, right, it's... Uh, and bingo. <coughs> Stanton Drew, the Great Circle. So that, that's the one in the middle. Um, notice is hereby given that under the provisions of the Ancient Monuments Act, the Ministry of Works has been constituted guardian of this monument and any person injuring or defacing the same will be liable to prosecution according to law ministry of works so be warned but that doesn't include sheep so there you go um look at the quite nice chunky stone so if we put i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get back into my blurb the problem is when 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 you've had a break um it it's it's difficult to get back in, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a go. We have got some nice new facts here. Carl, can I just ask uh, what kind of scale are those stones? What's the height um, of those big ones, for instance? Right, hang on, hang on a minute. Hang, right, so um, what what we've got um, the heights varying. So the the ones in the north are usually between four point five meters in height. Oh, they are big. Um, Right. And, and the ones are 1.4. So I think those are more like four by the look. Right. Because right. the illustration showed in, 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 that was that was behind you, showed them being oh. a lot bigger. And I assumed that they weren't that big, but that, they clearly are big then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. No, can, can we can we just. Yeah. Let's let's just address address that question a minute. So um, thank you. <clears throat> The the, th the thing the thing is as you know um, be, being an arty person yourself Andy perspective is not really yeah. the, the yeah. antiquarian's best point but these they okay right they are a bit overdone well they're not too bad still, if you think standing one on top yeah. of each other is about the same height and that would be about four meters so 
if they're if they're like six foot, that's two meters, give or take a few inches. Oh, but mm. but but mind you, the perspective goes completely. Can you? Yeah, it does this, with the man in front. Yeah. <laughs> no, that horse back in front of that stone in the middle, and it's yeah, big, <laughs> yeah, the miniature no, horse. But, yeah. but there there is another point, right? We we look at the average of those people of being about five point eight. Yeah. What if yeah. what if they were all seven? Um, Point four foot yeah. in height, like my yeah. great friend. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, that's a really good point, Andy. Yeah. So, do you, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to leave that image there, actually, for for a minute, because what what I want to do. So, so we we've, we've got this great circle, and it's it's we've mentioned that it's the second largest stone circle in Britain, but the big question is, um, Anna, do you ever heard of this one at Stanton Drew? No. Yeah. Well, hang on. It's it's the second largest circle in Britain. Why oh, no, haven't you still, heard of it? I still haven't heard of it. <laughs> yeah, but 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 this is the thing. You see, we 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 don't we we don't really make as much of of these monuments as we should do. We don't. So, and I suppose before I came to listen to you, I knew nothing about archaeology. I've I've started to drill. I've learned a lot since I've been coming. But I, I, in, unless you're sort of into it, you wouldn't. You don't know. It's not made much of, is it? By that gets to people who aren't, shall we say, studying it or looking at it. it just doesn't get through. But but but, but then again, but then <laughs> again, you're completely right in what you're saying. But then again, Anne, you're completely wrong because we we take our children to these things. We we take we 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 take our visitors to these things. Yes. Yeah. And even the, what you're but, saying, but I, but what, I never what you're did. actually saying. Right, okay, I okay. wasn't aware. Right. I suppose I wasn't aware of these ancient monuments a lot. I, I fell over a couple in Wales, you know, when I'm walking around with the kids. But uh, it, it doesn't mean I've followed it up because it wasn't something that grabbed my interest at the time. Uh, no, that that that's my point. That is exactly my point. That you you just made the point that I was getting to. Yeah. You may take people to these things, but you just like think, oh, that's that, that that's there, right? Yeah. Because, because when when my mum used to take me to um, my mum used to take me to um, well, no, but, no, my granddad used to take me to lots of places, and I can remember my mum used to take me to some of these places, and I remember where my granddad was interested. Yeah. Um, my mum wasn't, so she would take yeah. us. To me to Raglan Castle. She would pay for me to go in. I'd run around. We'd get into the car and we'd go home. Yeah. Uh, um. The, she knew it was there, but she wasn't yeah. really connected. Yeah. When you get yes. a connection, it gives that it understanding. Make, so makes all the difference. I mean, I'd be very interested now. When I was younger, and my children were small. I I really had no clue about it, and no. I'd go and no. look at the stone circle and know what I was looking at really, except some stones, and it. it it didn't connect at all. But but you got you it must get be that like that for a lot of people. You get that connection by by just that little bit of um, uh, that linking, right? Yes. So anyway, this this the, the the main the image that you're looking at. Um, this is this is from 1664. Um, um, a, a, a 108, 113 meter diameter stone circle. This is probably one of those that hasn't been mucked around with much. And interesting enough, the the, the great circle, the, this one of the of the two uh, of the three circles mm -hmm. in that area, um, thirty of um, twenty seven of the th original thirty stones are still there, which is great because what you usually find is lots of these stone circles, <coughs> like in Stonehenge, mm -hmm. stones are missing. So mm -hmm. um, so it was originally recorded by let let's let's show his face. Let, let, let's get the guy's face in here. Yeah? So um, the guy who drew that was, um, there he is. Um, so what you've got, you've got this guy by the name of um, John Aubrey. So he's there in, oh, in, yeah. in, in 1664, right? Um, oh, wouldn't I like to wear a wig like that? But it'd probably be full of all sorts of... Um, <laughs> so this, this, is, this is John Aubrey um, in 1664. Um, and more of a more of a dandy looking chap, right? A, a few years later, um, this is William Stukeley, right? And William Stukeley was was around in 1776. Both of them have got a lot of interest, and 
both of them are say both of them are echoing the same uh, the sentiment that I'm going to make now, um, and that date 1776 is not right. Um, it's more like 1726. My notes are wrong. I know William William Stukeley was there in he, he was doing this stuff in the early 1720s. So yes, I'm correcting the notes I'm looking at. So William Stukeley was there in about 1726. Um, and um, so so both of these individuals, John Aubrey and William Stokely, are actually there recording these things. Um, they're they're they 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 they're putting interest. They're, they're making people like Anne maybe think you know it's not just a load of stones. Um, it, it's not just um, it's it, it's it's a lot more. And um, what they're saying, they're saying, look, these things are old. You know, people have always said these things are old. They've got meaning. The Romans mm. said these things have meaning. And what mm. we've got to do, we've got to stop damaging these things. Um, we, we've we've mentioned about this ditch as well, and um, and it's and with lots of these stone circle sites. And Andy mentioned um, earlier on. He, he said about um, this. This isn't this isn't a site that's just just a stone circle. There's other monuments within the landscape such as that little cove thing and i've said there's a burial chamber further up north and and you've got all these other stones within the landscape around around it would have been a henge as well that we, we've got a when when we do looking at um prehistory we'll, we'll look at what a henge is basically in short a henge is um an arrangement of earth um that's um been excavated um, to create a, a circular concentric bank, um, and usually either the Earth is outside the circle or inside the circle. But then eventually, what's happening is that um, a stone circles usually end up inside these or outside them, depending on where you are. Um, so the the other thing as well is um, inevitably. It's all about size, isn't it? The, the the central circle. So what we're going to do, we need to get back to that plan again. Otherwise, we're going to we're going to lose track of of what we're doing again, giving meaning to. Um, so there we go. Let's sort of let's cut in there again. Um, right. So we need to get, give a few more scales. So it's best having a little bit of a plan. So, so the northeastern circle there is <coughs> thirty meters in diameter. It's naturally smaller, um, and and interesting enough, even though there's a lot more stones shown in that illustration, right? Um, they say that the original stone circle had ten stones, and eight of them survive. There's obviously more in the illustration than um, meets the eye. Um, and the south, the southwest circle again. So um, if we if we go back to that one, um, the southwest circle, as you can see, is a little bit bigger than the northeast circle, right? Um, and we, we're told that that was forty three um, diame diameters across. Um, and the one thing as well is I'm making a lot of fuss about one hundred thirteen diameters uh, diameters across, a um, uh, 30, 30 meters and forty three. Actually, these mean nothing, right? It's just it's just the size thing to 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 the people actually created these. They thought, oh, right. You know, they didn't actually sit down and say, oh, this has to be 113 meters in diameter. Right. And somebody and somebody said, oh, we, we've got to make sure the other one's 30 meters in diameter. Who's to say what came first? Do you know what I mean? Who's to actually tell us what came first? Um, and it's 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 also said that there may have been an alignment of stones leading to them as well, known as an avenue. That that's something that we've we've mentioned already. Um, there's a, there's an alignment of stones um, leading um, uh, in an alignment. So you've got two parallel alignments of stones leading to these stone circles, and and as you can see on the plan, there's not not really much much left of it there. Um, unless you look at the original one, uh, unless you look at this other sketch plan, where you can see other stones dotted along the landscape. So it's believed that those two stones may have created like an alignment of stones leading to the, the stone circles, right? And back to my notes, that thing up in the corner that says the quoit, okay, um, a standing stone, which might represent a burial chamber, maybe, um, it said as follows, um, William Stukeley said, he described that stone 
in in um, 1723. It's just one stone. If it was part of a burial <clears throat> chamber, just one stone standing. Um, that stone was um, 40, um, not 40 metres in length, four metres in length. Um, that's how William Stukeley described it in 1723, four metres in length. But now it's half the length because uh, bits have been broken off and used in the construction of the road. Hmm. Do, you know, do you know, some of you guys mentioned earlier on, you said actually um, some of the stones moved around and you mentioned Castle Rig. So um, the original stone that was described by Stukeley in 1723, the one that's marked the quite, which may have been part of a burial chamber where there's only one sta stone standing, it's only two meters long now above ground level um, because two meters of it was broken off, as I said, to build the road. So and, and the the one that's the one that says the cove, um, those stones themselves um, are, a, are a variety of, of heights. One of the stones there, there's, there's three stones there, one's um, four, four and a half meters in height. Another one's just over three meters in height. Another one's just um, under one and a half meters in height. So you've got three stones. Um, and again, what do these things mean? These are a thousand years earlier than the actual stone circle itself. So what we've done, we've, we've mentioned about Aubrey and we've mentioned about Stukeley going to these sites. What I'm going to mention um, is that these types of sites inevitably drew other people because one one thing one thing that these antiquarians did was to make other people aware that these monuments happen and they uh, exist and they might have said actually you know um there might be things buried there look at the size of that big massive chunky stone um, and what happens is it leads leads people into these sites. Um, and what's what's the term I'm looking for? It's more or less a catalog of history and archaeology. There's a, there's a catalog of history and archaeology. So um, what happens is that Aubrey and Stukeley put together these 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 books, and they describe like Stonehenge. They might describe Avebury. They might describe Stanton Drew. They might describe these places, and people look at them and say, "Oh, wow." Um, I want to I want to dig one of those sites. So they take a they take a shovel and um, they take a work gang and dig at these sites and see what they can do. Um, other people um, involved in uh, like um, this site, the Stanton Drew, in 1740, a guy by the name of John Wood, John Wood the Elder, and he started coming up with the idea that um, these were associated with with the Druids. Um, and actually the stones themselves were associated with the solar, lunar and earth cycles. Um, so um, one of the stone, one, one of the stone circles might represent the solar cycle. The other one represents the lunar cycle and the other represents the earth cycle. And why not? Um, and, <clears throat> and it's just and, and John, John Wood is John Wood is son, the younger is the one who's famously responsible for um, building um, what's described as the circus in Bath, in the rebuilding of Bath. Um, his son was responsible with, um, with the influence of, um, of this stone circle site for construct constructing what's known as the circus in Bath. So in other words, what, what's being seen is prehistory is actually influencing the current people are looking at these stone circles and, and, and being inspired by the fact that people built stone circles in the past and that they might actually be of some kind of relevance um, in the present. And, and basically, there's a, this, as I said, there was a massive rebuilding of Bath and, you know, and, and, and I know it's a circle and I know it's the stone circle. And why would that influence um, building in the modern time? And it did right back in the 1700s. Let's change, let's change the image again. I'm just realizing that there's a lot more stuff that I wanted to discuss today. So I'm just going to try and, oh, there we go. This is the, this is that monument, Stand and Drew the Cove. Um, you can see that the one stone there has collapsed um, out of the three that were, were once upright in the time of Stukeley. So um, again, um, 
we've we've mentioned all the antiquarian stuff. We mentioned um, how people might have been going to the site digging and their various interpretation. In 1997, um, English Heritage undertook extensive geophysical survey um, around the site, and it turned out um, that they 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 recorded in the geophysical survey. Um, 400 pits um, littering the site, 400 pits underneath the surface. So again, 400 indications of holes being dug around around the site. Um, some of these pits um, were, were one meters across, some were two and a half meters across. Um, and these may have these may have been associated with various other indications of of the stones being placed at different points around the site. Um, so in other words, a stone may have been placed into one pit and then taken out and put into another pit and then taken out, put into another pit. Or those those holes, those pits may have actually um, chosen to hold um, wooden timbers that is more likely because um, this is one of the this is one of the things that um, when when we look at Stonehenge. Uh, one of the big arguments is that um, initially um, the, the stones were placed into these holes and then they were taken back out of the holes and placed into other holes. And my argument against that is that when you've put a stone in a hole, it's very, very difficult to get it back out again. Right. So it's likely that lots of these holes and pits around this site that Stanton drew may actually be reminiscent of when there was a, a wood henge there, when there was the arrangement of wooden timbers rather than um, standing stones themselves, because the chosen material for these sites initially would have been timber, because timber was something that people were familiar with. Pe um, timber for the construction of, of circles, um, we, we see at Woodhenge, which is near Avebury, um, we, we 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 actually see that wood henge sites are um are quite um we're starting to find lots of them across Britain. Um there there was that uh, Norfolk Henge site, a wooden stone circle found along the coast um about uh, two decades ago. Um so you, you get these wood henge sites and basically the timbers rotted down, and this is what might be reminiscent of these hundreds of pits. That have been found ge uh, via geophysical survey. So what what they do? They they're constantly surveying the site and actually coming up with more and more evidence to say <coughs> that the landscape is about a lot more than just these stone circles, a lot more, and that that's that's very important. So the interpretation can be varied by not just by looking at the stones, but, but by, by, by what's buried underneath the surface. So this is the cove. And what we've got is another, um, another illustration coming up. This, this is as, um, this, is the, this is the Northeast Circle. Uh, this isn't the Great Circle, it's the Northeast Circle. As you can see, lots of the stones um, have actually been toppled at one time or another. But then I could argue that um, were they ever erect in the first place? Um, and myths and legends about Stanton Drew, which is very, which is a very important part of about all of this. The myths and legends. So um, Pete mentioned about, well, Pete and Andy, you know, uh, who's to say that they didn't have a Sabbath or whatever, and people weren't turned into stones. But this is all part of the myth and legend building. Um, being a henge and a stone circle site. Um, the common idea is, is it's to do with um, 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 astronomy, uh, um, astronomical alignments, which is a common theory, which is fine. It, it beats um, it beats people being sacrificed at the site and and so on. You know, so ast astronomical alignments is great. So you're thinking, hang on a minute. So it's not for feasting then. It's it's not for the usual things that they say Stonehenge is about. So another another theory about these sites, which which could stretch to any stone circle, but stone circle site. But the thing is, this is this is the other thing, right? They might have been used as astronomical observatories one year, and the next year they may have been used for as as feasting sites, and and a, and a decade later they may have been 
associated with some kind of funerary rite. Um, as a sacred site, um, this is is this is to be expected with all these different ideas. But it could also be associated instead of astronomical alignments associated with religious ceremonies and weddings. So there are several, several local um, traditional stories about this megalithic com, um, com, complex. And the word megalith, large stones, that's what megalithic means. The best known, the best known story associated with this, with this stone circle site. Um, and I think what we need to do is get, get a little bit of a map. So if we're going to talk about a myth and a legend about this site, what we need to do, we need to, um, this is, as we know, this is the Northeast Circle. So if we get the little plan up there, if we get the, this sort of um, little sense of context. Right, so there we go. Uh, we zoom in on that. Let, let's, let's talk about this, this little legend, right? So the year we go, it's a myth and a legend associated with this site. So the best, no, the best known legend tells of a wedding party that was turned to stone. The party was held um, throughout Saturday. Love it. There's nothing wrong with holding a party on a Saturday. But a man clothed in black, the devil in disguise, or Pete, came and started to play his violin for the merrymakers after midnight. So in other words, they merry, they merry made after midnight. Continuing into Holy Sunday morning, when dawn broke, everybody had been turned to stone by the demon. So the stone circles, the dancers, the avenues are the fiddlers, and the cove is the bride and the groom with the drunken churchmen at their feet. Um, they are still awaiting the devil who promised to come back someday and play again for them and unturn them away from being in stone. Now, there's also, there's also something else, right? Which I'm going to read this. It's a little bit of fun, and then we'll call it a day. Um, there's there's um, writers called uh, there's writers called Wade and Wade, um, and Wade and Wade in a in a book that they published in 1929 um, described uh, about Stanton Drew in a book called Somerset the following. One of the curiosities of the place of Howville's Quite, which is the stone that's a little bit further north, um, which to save time should also be looked for on approaching the village. It is a large stone which legend says was hurled by Sir Hotville from the top of Mice Knoll, M-A-E-S Knoll. Mice means field. And guess what? Mice is a Cornish and a Welsh term a native term so some of the uh, place names have survived the famous juridic remains will be found near the church which is these stones about 50 yards from the entrance to the church um, yard um, is describing where these are um, it says that the rays consist of three con um, uh, circles the first is of considerable area which is the big one and, it's, um, and it describes all of these and it describes <laughs> the scattering of stones, maybe creating an avenue. Um, it said um, that these mystic rings probably had the same origin, whatever that may have been. Nice. Um, as that of the more famous circle at Avebury in Wiltshire, with which they should be compared. The proximity of Mice Knoll is comparable with that of Silbury Hill. A ridiculous theory suggests that the mon monoliths were erected as a trophy after one of Arthur's victories. Arthur is connected to the site because a site in the nearby village of Camelie is reputed to be the location of Camelot in an oral tradition. The stones are of a reddish hue, <coughs> similar to that described in the Arthurian legend as connected to Camelot, as um, a sword that was seen in a stone near to Camelot. The country story is that, a local wedding, as we know, um, and the frivolous guests uh, would insist on um, uh, continuing to dance. 
and the penalty was that they were to be turned into stone. So you've got all these legends again. That one about the stone, King Arthur, rather interesting. Um, and we usually get King Arthur mentioned with lots of these stone circles as well, because they're stone circles, as stone circles, uh, the round table, Camelot, and all the rest of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to call it a day now, um, and um, I'm going to have to call it a day because I'm, I'm, uh, yes, I'm not feeling too hot. So, um, right. So, are there any questions, uh, Margaret? The circles from the air look perfectly round, um, yeah. but from the ground to get them in a perfect circle like that, would they have had a central pole tied to a vine, kind of plotting it out in a big circle? Easiest well, strange way. Enough, I'm, I'm, yeah. Strange enough, I'm building a roundhouse, which is um, which I need to have at least four meters in diameter, right? Mm. Uh, so I've got all the posts. Um, so I'm going to have um, a post in the middle and I'm just going to um, I'm just going to have a line and I'm just going to have an equal distance between that post and where I'm going to put that post. And then I'll have space between that post and that post. And that's how I'll do it. Well, they must have done that back then, wasn't they? And why yeah. not? Why yeah. not? It's easy. It's simple. Yeah. And actually, the easiest thing to build is a, is a, is a roundhouse. Mm. Do you know? Do you know um, the the reason why roundhouse is the easiest way to build i've been i've been building um i've been building structures here and um <clears throat> post posts are not regular diameter so when you when you when you when you buy posts they say they say that the the diameters of the posts are usually um they say oh you can have a post between they're all either 4 or 5 inches in diameter so if you put in a post in the ground and it's four inches and you put in a post in the ground and it's five inches in diameter, right? By the time you put a bit of wood between that and there and you've, you've tried to make a square, it's, it's not going to be regular, right? Mm. If you're trying to make a square with that type of timber, so because um, timber's not regular, but making a roundhouse, um, making something circular is a lot easier than something which is rectilinear or square. Is Stonehenge the only henge that has lintels on the top? Uh, the answer is yes. However, um, the reason why Stonehenge is so queer um, <laughs> is that um, there's nothing else like it in Britain. No. Did some of them at Karnak have lintels? Don't, no. Do they? I don't know. I'm just. No, I don't. I don't remember them. I remember no, the. No, I've, I've been there. there. I don't remember. I've them. never seen no. any with a, any no. on the top. But there are so seen many them. there. That, that yeah. The no. Movie. Not no no um no. But uh, you do have stones with lintels in places like Malta, but not sort of. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 thing the thing is the 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 big the big argument is this right? Um, you've got you've got Stonehenge. And not only do you have, um, uh, uh, you, you've got two different types of stones with lintels. Um, and the problem is they're built in two different styles. Yeah, um, different periods. Tongue and groove, um, mortise and tenon. Um, yeah. So you've got two different styles of, of stone circles with lintels at Stonehenge. Um they couldn't have just they couldn't have just sat sat down one day and said oh we'll do we'll do two different types it must have been done over different periods yeah and where did that evolve from them nobody mm. said you know it's like mm -hmm. um it's like suddenly turning around and saying oh actually what we're going to do we're going to have an m2 we're going to have an m262 jet fighter plane suddenly mm. on the planet and you haven't even had the Wright brothers planes <laughs> how how do you give, how do you deliver how do you get to a jet fighter from nowhere right mm -hmm. and this this is why lintels on Stonehenge are such an, a, a revolution but there must have been other stone circles in Britain with lintels on top there must, there must have been, been a reason for them or or, or wooden ones you know I mean because the the structure yeah. could oh, yeah, be the yeah, same yeah, for yeah, wooden yeah. ones uh, yeah and we know that we're there were definitely wooden structures that have mortise and tenons in before then yes. so. Yeah. Could, they have but, had a, could they have had a roof on at one time? Ooh. What, what, Stonehenge? Yeah. It, it has been described as Stonehenge. Um, there, there have been descriptions of Stonehenge, and I've seen illustrations 
um, of Stonehenge having a roof on, and there's no reason why it couldn't have had a roof on, except, um, yeah, that, that, that that's another thing altogether. And uh, it's one that you don't see in any... A, a building which is 113 metres across is is not is not viable um but then again mm. it de it depends yeah there, there, there's lots of let's just not go that there's different no. parameters yeah yeah <laughs> right so who's talking now so andy you've done your bit of you no i've not said anything yet I was curious um, when we were just going referring to Castle Rig and thinking about the henge idea. And a lot of the early stone circles have henges, uh, but Castle Rig doesn't, as far as I know. Um, and that's considered to be one of the earliest. And I wondered if that is actually part of the dating process. So. They've, they've had drones. Um, actually, with straight. The, 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 um, um, the Ring of Brodga does actually have a um, a henge. Mm. And it, um, the Ring of Brodga has a henge. If Castle Rig... Actually, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I, I am... I, hang on a minute. Castle Rig, I, I'm pretty sure there's something about a ditch. Yeah, there is. There's a bank. Yeah. Andy, mm. we'll, okay, we'll, we'll do right. that again. Yeah, we'll no, I was just again. curious. Yeah, sorry. sorry I, just, I must we'll, look we'll, more carefully. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that a, again. Yeah. Yes, we'll do that again. Yes. Yeah, they've had a phantom drone going over and having a look. It's, it's, they it's found, much better um, than a phantom found, raspberry blower. Uh, yeah, they're finding all kinds of things. Oh, good, because a lot of it could have just dropped down the hillside, couldn't it? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or being stolen from people from Barry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right. So, Andy, have you done your bit? Yes, thank you. Right, so we've done Margaret's bit. There's nothing wrong with Margaret's bit. We've done your bit, Gerard, Margaret, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we're, Anne, anything? Um, I, I found it... I don't know, there was such a lot to know in this, and it surprised me how much there was. But maybe the thing I shall take away from this lecture, more than any others, was the need for the reverence and care and I thought you brought that over very well. And, you know, it, it it's not something you immediately think of with a pile of stones, do you? But they are very ancient. Mm. And, uh, yes, I shall take that away. Thank you. <laughs> and can I, can I, can, I appreciate that. And can I just say one other thing? Just This, this is really important, right? Um, um, the, a circle of stones um, is actually a boundary. Uh, a ditch around something is a boundary. Mm. Yeah. A fence around something is a boundary. Um, mm. the, the the walls the walls within your house are a boundary. Um, <laughs> a, a hedge is a boundary, right? Just because you can get between the stones doesn't mean to say that you're a, that you should go between the stones yeah, yeah. to go beyond that boundary. Um, and um, it, it's like um, it it. it it's like that um, boogeyman's house that we all used to know about in a village when we were a child, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, don't go, don't knock the boogeyman's house door. You you could knock the boogeyman's house door, but you <laughs> never did, right? Don't don't um, don't. It's the same thing as this. Don't cross the road by yourself, right? The road is a boundary. You can cross the road if you want, but you don't cross it, right? What you told don't cross the road without an adult. You don't cross it, but you can. Why didn't you cross the road? But you don't do it. So just because it's not necessarily a truly physical boundary, it doesn't mean to say that you can go past that boundary. That's the that 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 is key to this. That that is that is yeah. key. Yeah. And, and it's it's all it's also the same thing, right? And if if you if you if you had a neighbour in your village, right? And, and their door was always open, right? You've got no right to go in through that door whenever you like. In fact, you've got no right at all. And you don't do it. You don't go in through that door. You never go in through that door. Um, and, and, and it's just, it's the same, it's the same as um, somebody saying, don't walk on a railway track. Well, you don't walk on a railway track. You can walk on a railway track if you want, but you don't. Um, 
and, and it, 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 it's the same thing with the stone circle, exactly the same process. People look at me mad and say, oh, you can, you can go in between the stones. And you say, no, you can't. Hmm. Yeah, but you can. OK, then walk, walk on a railway track and then, then tell me that you can do it because you can't. Tell so, Chicken um, George of Ambleside, he used to go in everybody's house. Who? Chicken George? Chicken George. <laughs> he was a local character. He kept chickens. And his family had lived in Ambleside for generations and generations. And he kind of thought he owned the place. Oh. And he would often just walk in without knocking. Oh, God. <laughs> oh so it sounds like a right character. It sounds a bit like Claire. She just wanders into Andy's house whenever she pleases. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> um, Drina. I don't know if I'm right because it was a long time ago. I went to Avebury and one side of the ditch appeared to be a lot steeper than the yeah. inside of the ditch. And I kept thinking it's probably to keep things in rather than out. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, 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 the, the ditch is inside the bank. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's that's basically what we're talking about. Ditches inside the bank, and um, um, and it, it's um, it 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 it's actually the same. It's actually the same process as as what I've just said. It it, yeah. it, it is all of this. All of this is about all of this is about controlling the mind. Everything is about controlling the mind. Now, um, it, it's it's about it's it's the same. It's the same as you've got a field, right? There's no path going through the middle of the field, uh, but there's a hedge around the outside. So you're more likely to follow the hedge around the outside than you are wandering, uh, using the path going through the middle of the field, right? Um, and it's exactly the same concept. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's to is to follow that direction and somehow to try and get in the right direction where you need to be. Or ev life, life is a process. Remember life, life is a, is a gradiating, um, millage, um, Ooh. of experience. And if you, if you allow that Vista to expand in front of you, you can get wherever you like. Um, and it's the same as a stone circle. Um, if you allow your mind to open, you can gradually get to the center, but you just don't walk to the center because you can never walk to the center of a labyrinth because there's a process to go through. And it's also the same process that you take to get to the center of a maze. You can never walk to the center of the maze because it takes time. Um, and it's a sense of gradation. And um, yeah. Wow, yeah, really. that was that was deep stuff. Mm. Yeah, sorry, I just um, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you, you can you can tell this is this is something that I should be telling telling you more about. Mm. It's Drina's fault. She 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 <laughs> just turned the key. You went off on one there. <laughs> yeah, I need I need to I need to rewatch that back. I can't remember. What I just I, I don't know what I just did. Right, okay. Um, right, last word from um, Jessica Fletcher of Jennifer Rigsby. La, 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 la. Go that was on, good, Carl. I um, had a look at my Ancient Britain book by uh, James Dyer as well, and it was quite interesting to uh, look back up on that because it's been a while since I've read that book. Yeah, you were all forced to buy one. Oh, well done, Jess. And I do... Thank you for that, Jess. And I do believe Andy wants to say one last thing. Is that right, Dan, Andy? I was just saying to say it's Eleanor Rigby, not yeah. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> does, does, think, does, does it really actually, does it really matter? Oh, yeah, we've totally forgotten. Hey, it's called <laughs> respect. It's called respect here. You can't just respect <laughs> oh, places. <God>. It's a <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Pete. When you look at those three circles of slightly different sizes, I'm sure they're compared with something they could see in the sky. 
interesting idea. But there, there is something else there, Pete, right? Or, 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 or it's about something that they want to see in the sky. Well, yeah. what they want to see, yeah. or what they could see. That's where the circles are, aren't they? Oh, the Trinity. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. But they must have seen the sun coming up in one place and sinking in another. Yep. What the heck did they think was going on? Can, can I? Can I? Aliens. Can I... <laughs> oh, don't spoil it. Can ah. I just? Can I... <laughs> That's the same thing. Well you, done, you're Jess. Not drawn anymore, Jessica. Right. Anyway, the other the other day the other day it must have been Saturday, right? I I I woke up and it was uh, I got up I got outside, um, and it was all sort of dark and muggy where I was standing, and in the distance, right, um, you could see a line of light, um, that the that the landscape was slowly being mm. illuminated, and it was getting closer, 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 and you see, it, it is exactly the same with the stone circle, right. Is is that is that gradiating um, <clears throat> accession of of going along that path to to that consciousness, and the consciousness is eventually the the radiation of the light that hits you, and it's the same as the radi radiation of the light within these places, mm -hmm. um, and no matter. Pete, you can talk about them representing the moon. I can talk about them representing something else. Well, yeah. But when when you when you get to that archetypal understanding of these circles, that is the meaning, and not necessarily um, what you're being told. Mm. Mm. And they would have been much more at one with their oh, environment. I, 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 I need. I need to lie down. Lie down in a dark room. Yeah. Uh, like lie down in a dark room. Lie down. Lie down. Um, mm -hmm. On that note, is there any? We know what we're doing next week. I did. I did tell you we, yeah. we were doing um, um, Jessica's love life. No, we're doing uh, the Etruscans next week. Oh, All right. Good. And um, and that that's that's that. So. Okay, then what I'm going to ask now, I'm going to ask, is there anyone <laughs> wanted to ask anything else before we finish tonight? No. no. I've just remembered no. one little thing. Yeah. Oh, I go had on, a, Andy. I had a, what, two and a half thousand year old statue in my hand on Monday. Oh, yeah. A oh, Chinese one. this is to do with Claire. No, no, it was it was a house I was doing some work at in the village, and it had been broken. It had it had fallen off and got snapped in half, but it was a clean break. It was terracotta uh, Chinese funerary or ornament of a uh, a lady in in dressed in a um, maternity them. gown, which oh, was right. which is really weird. But you, because it had snapped, you could see all the inside. It was brilliant. You can see wow. how the, all the clay had been folded and shaped and everything. It was really good. It's oh, going to, it? they've, uh, 6, 000, 600 BC. Wow. Because uh, wow. um, I thought it was a copy at first. He said, no, no, it's original. He said, unfortunately, I knocked it off the shelf a couple of years ago. Oh, and he said, I have now found someone who can restore it properly. Right. And it's going to grind down a little bit of the, uh, the the inside of it to be able to make a paste so that he won't see it. I thought, oh, brilliant. Because wow. he's an artist. He knows exactly what he's doing. But he was very upset it had got broken. But it was lovely an opportunity was, to see how it was made. Yeah. 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 Wow. Fantastic. Oh, that's um, that's amazing. I, I, flip an egg. We, we have a little shock every week, don't we? Aye. <laughs> It's it's a bit like it's a bit like the, the shock that we had at the beginning today. Um, Claire couldn't uh, attend because she got she was tested <laughs> positive for COVID. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, and I gotta be honest with you, that's got to be the best excuse I've ever had not to turn up. For a yeah, class. yeah. <laughs> if if we muted her, it would probably be all right. So. <laughs> Shut up, Andy. <laughs> And Andy, right, whatever you do, keep those jokes for another year, right? Because okay. um, it's soon be next yeah, year, don't I, worry. Yeah, yeah, I, I just <laughs> start again. <laughs> oh, shut up, you. <laughs> there are then. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, on, on that note, we're going to yeah. call it a night before I insult no. Andy. And uh, anyway, Andy, keep saving people. Andy, um, good night from me to Pete, Andrina, and Anne, and Margaret, and Jess. And Andy, no, no, I'll see you all next week. Good night, Thank all. you very much, guys. Bye, guys. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. My pleasure. My pleasure. My Bye. pleasure. Everything is wonderful. There's always Anne, she's there. Everything is bloody like the other Anne, isn't it? Christ almighty. Right, Jess, I can't stay long because I, I actually um, really don't feel well now. Yeah, no, that's fine, Carl. Um, I was just checking anything for tomorrow or do you want me to uh, sign in as you tomorrow? Um, let me ask, it's suddenly gone dark. Uh, yeah, um, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, no, that, that's... Uh, yeah, that'll be okay. Um, I'll, 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 yeah, I, I got the power, so I'll sign in tomorrow. Okay, Carl, speak to you soon. You look after yourself and don't let the bed bugs bite. And you, Carl. Good night. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye. Yeah, bye. No, no, Jessica. No, 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 no. That's me done for tonight. Knackered. Uh, over to YouTube and over and out. Thank you. <laughs>